Hi, this is the Science Chef. In the past nine series, we have directly or indirectly learned about the unique properties of acids, bases and salts. However, when exposed to the atmosphere, some of them tend to show some similarities in their behaviors. So today, we'll be learning about those behaviors with examples of substances that exhibit them in the tenth and concluding part of a series on acids, bases and salts. Please go nowhere, I will be right back after this timeout. The first behavior we'll be learning about is efflorescence. Generally, this is a phenomenon or process by which a hydrated substance loses part or all of its water of crystallization when exposed to the atmosphere to form a lower hydrate or anhydrous substance. Any substance that exhibits efflorescence is said to be efflorescent. Therefore, from this definition, we can safely say that hydrated salts are efflorescent substances. An example of efflorescence is shown in the partial loss of water of crystallization by sodium carbonate decahydrate, also called washing soda, to form sodium carbonate monohydrate. Other examples of efflorescent substances are copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate, sodium sulfate decahydrate, etc. When substances undergo efflorescence, as expected, there will be a decrease in their masses since they lose their water of crystallization to the atmosphere. Also, they lose their crystalline nature and become amorphous or powdery. Please note that when the loss of water molecules is due to the application of heat, that is thermal decomposition and not efflorescence. The next behavior we are considering is deliquescence. We can define deliquescence as a process by which a substance absorbs moisture and dissolves the need to form a solution when exposed to the atmosphere. The absorption of the moisture from the air will make the mass of the substance to increase after deliquescence, even though it forms a solution. This is because its new mass will be made up of the mass of the substance plus the mass of the moisture absorbed. Any substance that exhibits deliquescence is said to be deliquescent. And examples of deliquescent substances are sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium chloride, iron 3 chloride, phosphorus 5 oxide, magnesium chloride, silica gel, etc. The last of the three behaviors we are considering is hygroscopy. Hygroscopy is the phenomenon by which a substance, when exposed to the atmosphere, absorbs moisture from it and becomes wet or sticky if it is a solid or dilute if it is a concentrated solution. A substance that undergoes hygroscopy is called a hygroscopic substance. Just like the liquescence, the mass of a substance increases after it undergoes hygroscopy. Examples of hygroscopic substances are concentrated sulfuric acid, copper 2 oxide, sodium nitrate, calcium oxide, also known as quicklime, etc. One key use of the liquescent and hygroscopic substances is their use as drying agents in the lab. Drying agents, also called desiccants, are substances that have strong affinity for water or moisture used for drying substances in the lab. They are usually used for drying gases and also commonly used as desiccants in desiccators for keeping solid substances dry. Hygroscopic substances are more suitable drying agents than deliquescent substances because of their higher affinity for water than the latter. It is important to note that a driving agent cannot be used to dry a substance it reacts with. This explains why we cannot use concentrated sulfuric acid to dry ammonia gas because they will react together in neutralization reaction to form a salt, ammonium sulfate. To learn more about neutralization reactions, check the link in the description. Similarly, the concentrated acid is not used to dry hydrogen sulfide gas because they will undergo a redox reaction to form sulfur dioxide, sulfur and water. To learn more about redox reactions, check the link in the description. 
Displayed on the screen are some common drying agents and the gases they can be used to dry. You can pause the video to read through. This brings us to the end of our series on acids, bases and salts. Thank you for following us throughout the series. We truly appreciate your kind gesture and we will not take it for granted. In our next tutorial, we will be learning about the next equation. If you would like to be notified when the video is published, just subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Remain on top until I see you when I'll see you.